We now, just remember, are live. You want to wait a second before you announce that we're live. Well, I did. I knew you'd do that. I knew it too. <laughs> is, that, right. is that American humor? Is it? Yes, I think it is. <laughs> Where you just do the same joke over and over again? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> it gets funnier each time. Does it? <clears throat> Excellent. I can't wait for that then. Oh, I see. Mind you, it was, a was pretty, okay. particularly so. low bar to start with. <laughs> Any issue you were saying? Yeah. Uh, no, you start, Andy. Well, I, you said so. Yeah, I was noticing that it wasn't going to Facebook for some reason, and I just realized why. Okay. okay. So now yeah. we're live? No, we were live already on YouTube. Hi, YouTube. But now we're, we should, now we're live on Facebook. Yeah. You Ooh. know what? We do a multi stream. <laughs> this is Literary Roadhouse. One short story once a week. I'm Andy. I'm an ace. <laughs> and I'm Gerald. <laughs> Gerald doesn't Sorry. know what his name is. <laughs> no. <laughs> this Do week we week. read a lovely little story called Silverfish by Christina <laughs> Perez Brubaker. Um man, how do I describe thee? Let me count the ways. Uh so this is a story about this uh shitty asshole named James and his wife, Lauren, and their daughter, Porter. And James is real shitty and selfish in a lot of tiny ways and not openly abusive in any way you could point a finger to. And he's the worst, and I hate him. That's a great really? summary. Yeah. yeah. Um, so so they summary. have this awful... Okay. Some bugs happen, and Lauren wants to treat the bugs without chemicals, and James is like, well, that didn't work, so I'm going to spray poison while you're gone and lie to you about it. Um, yep, I'm with James. And then there's a couple, like, not like flashbacks, but sort of flashbacks, exposition things about their past. We find out about this shitty dog they have, like the worst instantiation of dog in the world. Uh, because Lauren and Porter had wanted a cat and had been dropping hints of the cat. And so James got the exact fucking opposite of a cat, which is a oh. Chihuahua pug dachshund crossbreed. What oh. is that? What is that? Can we just for a moment say that's not, that's barely a dog. <sighs> so that thing's awful. And then the bugs and like all kinds of nonsense that James pulls just in little, in little niggling, like poking Lauren to make her upset ways, and then pretending he's surprised when she gets upset, and then thinking horrible things. Don't forget the horrible thoughts right. he has in his own mind all the time. All the yeah. time, mm -hmm. running what? commentary. It's in James's perspective, so there's always a running commentary about what an asshole he is. Yeah. Um, and then they have a big fight with Lauren. James and Lauren fight, and it's all his fault, obviously. It is. Yeah, pretty much. It's the worst. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you agree, Gerald. Mm -hmm. I'm glad we're all on the same page about this. Yep. I was being ironic, but carry on. <laughs> we're pretending not to notice that. <laughs> um, and then that shitty dog gets his stupid head caught in a fence because he's an idiot and he can't fend for himself and <sighs> bites know. Lauren when she gets his head out of a fence because he's stupid. And then who won't come inside. And then he runs out the gate when Lauren opens it. And won't come back, so he's gone. And fucking coyotes tear his head off. And the daughter tries to find it, and that doesn't happen. And then James realizes how he's shitty at taking care of his house because the neighbor's got a clean garbage can, and he's just shitty all around. And then <clears throat> at the end, they explain to the daughter what happened, and it closes in... At the time, I'm gonna I'm gonna provide some analysis. At the time, I got Ooh. to this ending, and I was like, Ugh, "That's a dumb, dumb, abrupt literary short story ending." Oh, but no, then it's I was like, ending. "It's a great." As ending. I was, yeah, as I was going to bed later, it kind of grew on me. And uh, the coyotes ate the dog because of the drought that's been pushing them more into you know neighborhoods. I was like, "Oh, it's not the coyotes' fault, really? Then whose fault is it?" The drought, Porter said. Those poor animals are starving. Right. It's not the coyote's fault. Mm -hmm. The drought made them do it. 
Right. And also Porter's growing up to be a well-adjusted, emotionally intelligent, well-developed child, all because of Lauren's efforts for right. as far as any of us can see. So despite being called Porter. What's that you about? know, that's a thing that happens in upper middle class America. They you get know? Named Porter. I, I like the honesty of the story of naming your daughter Porter. Also, uh, the dog is named Daisy and is a girl. Yeah. Yep. It's a girl. <clears throat> I'm, I'm, I'm going to name, if I, can't I have any more children, girl ever. I'm going to call them traditional English ale. That's what I'm going to do. Your, your porter? Yeah. Traditional English ale. That's what I'm going to call my, ne my next children. <laughs> <laughs> so, Gerald. Hello. Why don't you, you like the story? Me? Yeah, you love the story. Tell us how great it was. Um, well, for one thing, I can't believe that we read the same story. Um, for another thing, it was just, yeah, he was, he was a bit of a dick, but he he provide he, he didn't, you know. What he's he's false if we call him like false. Referee whistle. <laughs> what? Because you were about to say, oh, he provides. Just... I was like, oh, like I've only just started. I've only just started. started. God, God, Go give ahead. me a chance. I'm saving um, you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, I, I I didn't continue with what with my discussion, but but. <clears throat> Yeah, he's he's yeah, the the fact that he's a bit he's a bit blokey, he's a bit he they want a cat so he he got a dog, but he took the child to get the dog. And Gerald, that's not a dog. Like <clears throat> okay. Well I, I, I hate I, to interrupt you, but I love oh, it. Do you <clears throat> really? Go on. It's not he didn't get a dog. He got the worst thing, right? Like Right, it's a it's a work of fiction, and the author could have put any breed in there, right? Any it could have been a a lab or a golden retriever or nope, it's a pug chihuahua dachshund crossbreed. That's not a dog, Gerald. That's that's barely a living thing. That's a monster. I'm gonna let Gerald speak, but I have thoughts about this dog as well. Continue. <laughs> That'd be yeah, go <laughs> on, Gerald. God forbid, eh? Um, anyway, so so yeah, he gets the dog. He get the, they get this infestation of silverfish, and she goes, "Ooh, I'm going to put all these cedar bark things around the house," and which didn't work. And and then oh, he's he's the worst kind of person because he got an exterminator person in and and got rid of them. You know that that's I guess yeah maybe. She didn't want chemicals in the house, but sometimes you've got to spray the stuff to get rid of the vermin. So he got rid of the vermin, but that you know that was the big problem. So and the the I mean, story is called Silverfish, and the silverfish takes up for the audio. I'm going for the tape. Yeah. I'm going to have two inches here. Um, the silverfish takes up that much, and and the rest is about the dog, and, and it's not about the silverfish. So why is it about the silverfish? <sighs> I, I'm, I'm I'm getting more angry with the story because I just think it's it's I think it's cliched. I think it's derivative. I think it's very easy to to paint this guy as somebody who doesn't uh, who doesn't care, who's who's obstinate and and arrogant, and and <laughs> he's he's just a guy. Okay, it's I'm going to come out strongly saying I don't think it's derivative. <laughs> right. um, yeah, and I think it's, it's a lot better than than I than you give it credit for. Also, I think the whole thing with the dog and the whole thing with the silverfish have perfect parallels. He she goes behind her, like okay. Like the biggest thing that bothers me about James that we're not getting into aside from the shitty thoughts he has about his own wife all the time and how just selfish he is is remember there's that line where he's mocking her for her career as uh, ch she did child development. And he said that she, she was getting paid to play with children and he would sort of dismiss that. And then from the looks of it, she gives up her career to be a stay-at-home mom to make his life and their daughter's life run on rails, right? 
And then he calls her semi-retired. He's always like gently teasing her, whether she works, whether she doesn't. He doesn't respect her. And yet he expects the house to be her domain, right? She's supposed to be in charge of what they buy and what they do and every she, little aspect of Porter's life. Yeah. yeah. He likes showing up at the end and signing he a check. He shows up at the end and signs a check. He just signs up at the end and signs a check. And he likes how that feels. He gets a dog and that dog is peeing and pooping all over the house. She cleans it. Who walks the dog? The wife walks the dog, not him, right? Who needs to let the dog out at night? Lauren does. And yet, and yet he has the audacity to expect her to make his life run on rails. And yet he wants to be the boss of the home and childcare domain as well. And like, like he like resents that he can't make executive decisions about ter uh, who, how to terminate silverfish or whether or not you have a cat or a dog. Like he doesn't even, it's like, She's a woman who used to have a career, who gave up that career to be a stay-at-home mom. Now she is administrating their lives. It's a lot of work. Unpaid, you know, we can say, oh, unpaid, unpaid, whatever. He's also providing for her. That is the exchange. But part of the exchange is you need to respect that and let her have her domain. And you can't just be coming in here undermining her all the time because you don't agree with her without having a conversation. That's what annoys me to no end. He's so disrespectful. He does not respect her at all. Anyway, that's why James is a dick. That's, that's reason number one. There's also reason number two, three, four, and five. That's right. Well, so like the thing with the silverfish is he didn't say like, "Hey, you know what, Lauren? It's been a it's been a week now, and these the cedar chips aren't working. We're gonna hire an exterminator. I know that's not what you want. We gotta hire an exterminator. That's the only way to get rid of them. Mm -hmm. No, he He's a coward. Right. He did it. Arranged for it to happen while she was at work, and then when she fucking immediately knew that he had sprayed poison, said, nah, nah, there's no smell. You're making that up. Was she at work? Let me double check because I thought. Oh, no, not at work. She was, yeah, yeah, just, right. Yeah. She's retired. She was at ballet practice. Right. Once right, she was right, out right. of the house with right. the daughter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Because she runs everything. <clears throat> right. Yeah. He's the worst. The he's worst. the worst. The worst. He's not the worst. He he's is the not worst. the worst. He's nothing the like the worst. Oh. He's, he's, He's a he's a, a minor irritant. Yes, he's no, not he's a, a constant minor irritant who knows what he's, he's doing. That's the thing. It's it's he not. Does. He knows exactly right. what he's doing. He yeah. doesn't hit anybody. He doesn't drink too much and come home in a in a tirade. But he's he's a constant irritant and never lets anything not be the way he wants it and. You can't have the thing you want. He's like you don't the think you're extrapolating a bit here. By any He's the no. boring kind of the worst. <laughs> the boring and the common kind. He couldn't okay, so pinpoint when he'd started playing this game. A form of chicken, seeing how far he could push Lauren. Punishments, yep. some remote yep. part of him knew, for how he felt she treated him. Mm -hmm. And again, <laughs> how does he feel that she treats him? Yeah. Poorly by fucking arranging everything for him. Yeah. Yeah. And also when, when he hears her after that one argument that they had, you know, one of the flashbacks and he hears her upstairs dealing with drawers and he has that little bit of a panic that she might be packing her suitcase. But then when he walks in, she sees that she's actually folding his clothes and putting it in his drawers. And he has this huge sense of relief. It's like, dude, screw you. You know, your wife is upset. You know, she just stormed out. You do not care about the state of your marriage or the fact that she is upset with you. So long as she is folding your clothes and not leaving you on her terms instead of yours, because you've entertained the thought of leaving her. Oh, I yeah. Know. He's the worst. He's the worst. And he's a very common kind of banal worst, right? Like that's the thing is right. He's not physically abusive. He is not right. an he's addict not a, who's destroying their lives. A melodramatic worst. Right. So, the worst so, kind of so worst. therefore, he's not the worst if he's a common type. No, he's a of secret worst, worst which yeah. is it's worse. A secret. It, it's, I, 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 as I say, uh, you know, I'm not defending him. He's, he's not a very <laughs> nice character. Right. Um, but, but to say he's the worst, he's, he's evil, he's horrible. Um, I, I, I I've seen people like this. Um, that makes sense. And, and, and yes, you you feel sorry for the woman, the the, the wife, the mother, um, in in that situation who is who is trapped in a, in a disrespectful marriage, and and that's that's not good, obviously. Um, but you know, so it, it's not it's not. 
He's not the worst. That's my yes, point. he is. That's my point. No, More not. evidence. <laughs> The worst. As Andy was saying, so this story is very closely from James's point of view. And one of the things that James sort of like mocks her about in his mind is her wellness that she got into after her brush with death when she had a hysterectomy, right. like trying to deliver his one and only child. Like, you're the worst. Oh, really? She got into wellness when she almost died? You don't say. The fucking worst. He's the worst. Ugh. Yeah. He anyway, just has no sympathy for her. And also, also, he blames her disposition on motherhood, on age, on the things that hijacked the woman he married. Why isn't his name on this list? Right. I'm not saying that motherhood hasn't changed her or time and age doesn't change her, but also he's the worst. I know there's one <laughs> particular very different influence on Lauren's life that started the day they were married. Yes. Mm -hmm. Who does not make that list? Yeah. Yeah. He's the <laughs> worst. And I said in Slack... The actual title of this, because you're right, Gerald, silverfish are a tiny part of this. It should be called Men Should Be Deleted. Like, that's <laughs> the actual title of the story is Men Should Be Deleted. And again, not all men. There are plenty of men who are not like this. I know plenty of men who are not like this. Just based on Andy's reaction, he is clearly not one of these. Uh, but also, we all know men who are like this. They are not a rare problem. We are not. A, like, this story is not exploring some rare thing. That all of us are like, oh man, it must be horrible to grow up the child of a refugee from some country. You know, like it's not like a very particular niche thing. It's super common. Oh man. And 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 that's why I say it's it's that's why I say it's cliched, because it it's super common. It's there are a lot of men like this who are disrespectful to their wives in different ways and and yes you're right he doesn't go out drinking and come back late but a lot of men do uh, a lot of men go and, and and are solely focused on their own uh lifestyle on their own work and then their own um sort of hobbies and and leisure activities uh and the woman is just there to to do the house and i i've met so many men like this so it really it's it's not saying anything to me that I don't know that there are men like this. But see, I like it so because um, you don't see it so much in stories, though. You, in stories, you go for the melodramatic thing, right? In mm. stories, you go for the over the top. If there's a bad husband in a story, he's like, Meh, blah, <laughs> I'm the bad husband, right? <laughs> And this is just a really nice, close portrayal of of a realistic bad thing. Mm -hmm. And so long as men like this exist, stories like this would be extremely useful in case one of those men should chance upon this and see themselves in it with horror, right? Like there is a chance that this might help rehabilitate some dudes, which would be it great, right? It won't because th they will not recognize themselves. They will not. And even if they do recognize themselves, they'll say, <laughs> like me, and I'm not like this, but they, they'll say, ah, so what? He's not that bad. He's not, he's not beating her. He's not, he is not, you know, setting fire to the house. He's not such a bad guy. You know, he's a little bit naughty, but that's all right. But plenty of men, especially in my generation and younger, have recognized this for the horribleness that it is. And that had to come from somewhere. It had to come from conversations, right? It had to hmm. come from, from being empathetic to the other side of this, right? And you only get that by having conversations like this one that are started because of stories like this one. And for that reason, I will defend it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. I wanna, I wanna, I wanna change course on us though. Yeah. Um, just because for for a couple of the stories, right? We've we've now gotten diverted into talking about how horrible James is, and we all agree that this is uh, the worst person. We're all in agreement. Right. We're all in agreement. <laughs> yeah. No, so now, Gerald, right. You know, no, nodding his not. head in agreement. Yep. So now that we all go. agree, uh, right? What 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 about it as a story? Right? What about it as a piece of work? Um, I know for me, something about it. I thoroughly enjoyed the the prose as I was reading it, right? Mm -hmm. As I was going along the story, I was like, okay, yeah, this is carrying me along. And when I got to the ending, I felt I was like, Bleh. and uh, I think I said, mm, technically. And then Karina was like, oh, how, how was the story? And like, yeah. um, oh, er. <clears throat> okay, that's bad. Yeah, the ending, the ending really threw me at first, right? 
And it wasn't until I kind of ruminated on that last like paragraph in a bit. I was like, oh, that was kind of clever, right? And like it didn't resolve anything with Lauren and James or Porter. It didn't even resolve anything with the dog, really, right? But the uh, striking up all the parallels, right? We have we have Lauren's wellness thing in her in her health and her natural cures, and they don't strictly say it, but that feels like in the same box as environmentalism, right? Oh, yes, because she changed her, her plastic to glass, right? And then uh, the coyotes are there because of the drought, right? Because of negative environmental impacts. So if if there's a parallel between it's not the coyote's fault, being it's not Lauren's fault, since Lauren's the one who opened the gate, uh, it's because deliberately they were opened starving, the gate. right? It's because deliberately opened the gate. Right, deliberately opened the gate because so fuck she's that the worst half because dog. she's lying, lying to her daughter. <laughs> Oh, come on. <coughs> no, no. Well, you see, you're saying, oh, come on, because that's, you know, that's hardly anything. But her actions <laughs> led to the demise of a living creature, right? Of, of their pet dog. Right. That, but that despite it's, his. But his it's not the coyote's fault, problems, Gerald. Eh? It was starving. What was yeah, the, dog? Of the drought? Mm-hmm. Well, if she'd have kept the gate shut, then it, she it wouldn't have been attacked by a coyote. Well, if. Would it? Right. If there wasn't a drought, the coyote wouldn't have been there. I agree right. with Andy with this parallel. Like the things that drove the coyote into this town, you can blame that behavior on some external influences. Lauren also is being driven into a certain behavior by unlivable circumstances. Right. By by <laughs> telling Lauren that she is crazy all yeah, the time. Works all the time. She did something a little crazy. She felt yep. a little crazy. And, and not just that. Is it really that crazy? Like, no, it's dude, not even that crazy. It's not even but, that crazy. She tried to bring the dog back in. The dog bit her, and she's, you know, at her wit's end. She figured she kept going down every time she heard a scratch at the door, thinking it was a dog coming back. She didn't think, oh, I am releasing this dog to have it killed. Like, right. that wasn't the plan here. Also, uh, she doesn't really lie to her daughter. She does take the blame for letting the dog out, right? You know, like... She doesn't. No, she, t- she specifically said it was the it was the pest control guy. Oh, that's right. I forgot yeah. about that. It was the pest well, control well, guy. Well, yeah. Okay. She, like, she married she, it with something. No, she did lie. She's a Little dirty bit, yeah, liar. Yeah. That's what she no. is. She said she lie to her she child. Lie enough, She's the I worst. <laughs> She's, that's a terrible <laughs> lie. That's a terrible way to begin raising a child to tell no, them lies. No, it's not. Because this child at the end, there's there's two things I like oh, about this end. One, the parallel that Andy already pointed out between the coyote and Lauren. And two, what a remarkable thing for a second grader to be able to grapple with something so difficult and yet move on in such a mature way while still grieving. That is an achievement of parenting pulled off by Lauren, which, you know what I mean? I like, I like that wow. Porter at the end is an impressive child at the age of seven, you know? Like, I think that is like the final sort of nail in the coffin for James because James was not involved in telling Porter anything. Lauren also had to take on that work as she takes on all other work when it comes to Porter's development. And despite this crazy making environment, Lauren's succeeding and you see it in Porter. So I love that it ends with Porter being impressive. What what is a second grade? I don't know what a second grader is. Oh, um, in Britain you got to convert it so you multiply by one point two five and add thirty. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Right. That's it's like a thirty-seven Celsius grader. Seven years old. Seven years old. Thank you very much. That's that's (laughs) useful. But But in metric. Yeah. In metric years. But I (laughs) I want to say Lauren didn't lie enough, ladies. If you find yourself married to a James but trapped and not sure how you can leave because you rely on him financially, if you accidentally do something that leads to the death of the pet, do not tell James because he will lord this over you for the rest of your marriage or until you kill him, which honestly, I don't know if a jury would convict you of murder for that one. But listen. uh, Now if you blame the coyotes. Yeah, I don't. When Lauren tells James that she let the dog out, I was like, Lauren, no. Lauren, this man does not respect you or love you or care about you. He's not going to sympathize with you about this horrible thing that you regret. He's going to lord this over your head for all of your living days. Yeah, but you know what? 
I don't know. At at the end, after she made him sleep on the couch for a couple of days, um, not all the way, right? She's still trapped in the house. She's still mm-hmm. trapped in the house. She's not divorced. She doesn't have custody of the kid, and they're gone. Right. But no, she she kind of has a leg to stand on now because James is actually like a pushover bully. Right. She had to get her feet under her, but then she kind of did. She's like, no, I let the fucking dog out. Because fuck well, you. No, she said it with regret, I think. Right. Uh, I didn't read it that way. <laughs> with regret. What does she say? So, I let her out. You what? Last she night, was crying. Remember? I let, she was crying out. I let her out. You I, what? Because I let her go. Set her free. Right. <clears throat> and, and then, yeah. and then, and then he says, why did you do that? Free. She's not a fucking hostage. She's our dog. She said, don't yell at me. She said, but she's, she basically consigned that dog to, to death. She in effect killed that dog by letting it out into the, into the front. And well, you know, better than living with James though. Yeah. But you're stopping just before the monologue where she's like, she wasn't wearing a collar. I thought something, I don't know. She's pacing back and forth. Their bed is unmade. She's, she's stressed out about this. He tells her to stop pacing. It's making him dizzy. She ignores him. You know, she's thinking about it. Like she is affected by this. She didn't want the dog to die. Yeah. But I don't think she's, she's. mm, Yeah. yeah. She wanted the dog gone. Here's where he thought she'd crack this new self-possessed version of his wife, but she didn't. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. She's, she she's, me, broke she's got the her skin. She held her up her fist, yeah. but James couldn't make out any marks. So I think she's a fantasist. I think she's she's making stuff up. She's lying oh, to her child. Yeah, James thinks she's making stuff up too. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna call you James from now on, Gerald. Well, was she make it up when she smelled the poison because the poison was odorless? I don't know. Well, she smelled something. She smelled something. She's yeah. not I mean, the think, lack of those chips. Yeah. <laughs> I think you're right, yeah. Andy, that she does have her feet under her, but I don't I don't read it as conniving and sinister as Gerald seems to be implying. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like this isn't yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, I think it, it you see it depends on on where you're looking at this thing. And and, and if you're looking at it from looking at it from her perspective, totally her perspective. And and James is is an ass, and he, he's 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 an unfeeling, sarcastic, um, demeaning, undermining, git. narcissist. Yeah, right. Yeah. Narcissist. So as written, what? as written. No, I'm not reading this from her perspective because I don't have her perspective. I can only read this from James's perspective, and I still think James is the worst. And Lauren <laughs> can do so much better. Where's he? Where is he a narcissist then? The entire story. Remember when he's like <laughs> thinking about leaving her and then he sees himself aging and he's like, man, I better get a move on but because pretty soon who's going to take me? And then he sees her aging. He's like, oh, yeah, nobody will take her either. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Incredible. Yeah, now she's That's... stuck here. Yeah, every That's... time he fears her leaving, it's never out of love because he can't live without her. It's always like, well, who's going to do my laundry? He's the worst. Does it say that? Does it say Pretty that much. in the story? Yeah. No, it's yeah. He's satisfied by her folding. There's 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 above the line story, there's subtext, and then there's there's deep dive misinterpreting the words on the page. I to, don't know. To, 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 and I misinterpreted it in exactly the same way. Yeah. Independently. Well, well you both talk funny, so that's probably <laughs> And, you know, going back to what Andy was trying to do to get us to talk about the story, we are only talking about this so passionately, about the fact that these characters, as if they're real, because they're written so real. The dialogue is so real. These characters feel mm. so... Like, we know so many people like this, as you yourself have said, Gerald. Like, it's not an easy thing to do. Like, the author is making that look seamless. We're here like, yeah, well, what's your point? Like, wow, she put together a story where the pacing was so good that at no point did it feel like it was dragging on or needed an editor, right? It, it just flowed along. Boop, 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 boop. The dialogue was so realistic. Those arguments were exactly how you would expect them to go. Um, and the characters are so well drawn without dumping anything on you that mm. we're just right in the story with them and we're sitting here passionately arguing about them. And that is something most authors cannot pull off. Like, right? Like you read a lot of stories and one you either get bored pretty easily right like let's be honest right or um 
they have to spend a lot of time convincing you that their character is real. You know what I mean? They have to spend a lot of time drawing a character for you to make that character feel more than two dimensional. And this doesn't really do that. She, she draws it so seamlessly. It's like woven into the plot, woven into his thoughts, two or three sentences at a time. It's really expertly done from a craft perspective. I, I think you're right. I, I think you're, you're moving away from the characters on which we will never agree, I suspect. <laughs> um, the, the, as a, part of the thing, yes, I said it was a bit cliched and perhaps a bit boring, but actually she did do a great job with the characters because they are so next door. They're, they they are, they, we all know people like this. And and they're not wildly, ridiculously overdrawn. So she, you know, she's um, yes, she had the 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 bad the uh, the bad birth, and so she's she's trying to look after herself and looking at organic food and 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 looking after the planet and all that sort of stuff, which is all sort of very laudable. But it's not it's not troweled on, is it? It's it's just it's really sort of quite subtly done. Uh, and, and quite explicit, but but still not not dumped on you from a great height. So so you know who the characters are um, really easily, and and that is yeah, that's something to be lauded. Mm -hmm. And and how smart to do it from James's perspective, right? If you do this from Lauren's perspective, making James the villain is almost too easy, right? Like doing Probably. this from James's perspective. And still, we all agree that on some level he's a dick. Andy and I have taken yeah. him to 10 out of 10 maximum dick. You're coming in at like a seven, Gerald, maybe, right? But but still, we all agree he kind of sucks. And yeah. she did that from James's perspective, and James never thinks he sucks. Right. Not once. Like, that's such skill right there. Yeah. 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 And, and, and yeah, it's, it's quite interesting to, to for her to put herself in James's situation acting out james's behavior um but also seeing it like normal and seeing it like um everything she what, what's his, his wife called lauren um everything she does is is to spite him and, and not everything but but he sees things that 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 she does which are against him and um and, and that's yeah that's that's really well done hmm. I've talked myself up, by the way, because yeah, there, was, yeah. there was one part of me when I read this where I wasn't immediately super impressed because this is so of our time. It's such a reflection, Gerald, of what you were saying, of what we already know, right? Because mm. we live it every day. But like, think about the books like written in like the 1800s, right? That were very much about that day. And I wonder if people reading that were like, oh yeah, everyone knows about the Darcy's, right? Like everyone knows about those <laughs> kinds of dudes. Um, so I wonder if there's like a certain thing where it's like, it's just this story is so well observed of the types of marriages that exist in Western society, middle, upper middle class uh, families, right? It's such a sharp, but not overdone look at that, that it almost feels like you haven't told me, I, well, tell me something I don't know. But she told it in such a enduring and masterfully written way that as I'm doing this, I'm feeling all the emotions. Some of my notes are in all caps. Like I'm like, he, like my all caps notice, he doesn't let her have a domain, but insists that she runs his domain, right? Like he doesn't like respect her decisions, but yet expects her to do all of the work anyway. So um, all caps, like that's, that's not easy to do. We read a lot of stories where I'm not moved that strongly. Hmm. So yeah, my book, my, my numbers got up. If you guys have anything yeah. to add, yeah, no, just mine significantly <clears throat> as well. Um, yeah, partly the abrupt ending threw me, and I judged it immediately. But yeah, the the more I thought about it, and then I was talking it over with Karina, and then talking it over with you guys, I'm like, yeah, no, this is good. Yep. And I did immediately share it with three people. I didn't even finish reading it and I was already sharing it with people, which is normally a really good sign, right? Like if I want me like, guys, you gotta read this right now. And I'm mostly sending it to like married women I know who have these complaints. I'm like, guys, look, 
<laughs> it's the story of your lives. Cool. So, and I also sent that as my boyfriend as like a cautionary tale. Right. Here you go. Learn. Learn from this. He's not like this, but, but let me not let him ever think he could be. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case. This is not you. Because you'll kill his fucking dog. That's right. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> and then lie Before about it. Malice. <laughs> All right, are we ready to rate? No, but I, I... <laughs> you you carry on. I'm 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 still thinking. I got bumped all the way to a six. Yeah, yeah. I shared it with too many people. I have. That's really your criteria. It really is my criteria. If I start like literally shouting about this, you got me. Well done. Yeah, I was thinking so. When I first read it, I was like, okay, it's like what? It's like a three. Maybe it's a four. I was like, well, no. It's probably a five. Uh yeah, I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna give it a six also. Yeah. And for those who are new, our rating is from one to six. Be- yeah. Because we're weird. And also because like it's really a one to five with a six for like the stellar like standouts, you know. Cause five's a very good story. Um Go on, Gerald. Just admit James is the worst, and your rating he's will not go the, up. If that's I mean, the he's problem. He's terrible. not the worst. Well, rate know. the story and not the character of James. <laughs> oh, I, I am. The, uh, you see, that's that's the problem I'm having. Um, right. I I I think I'll give it. Uh, I th- I think I'll give it a four and a half because I don't. F- I don't feel st- the, the 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 strong feelings I get is de- trying to defend how I feel about it. Uh, I don't get any strong feelings about the story itself. It's just yeah, it's just a you know, the, it, it's just the average everyday married with a child life that's that's got some silver fish and a, and a dog in it, and and I, well, I, barely I, I a just, dog. <laughs> That's I hate your that sum- dog. That's your summation. Um, so I, I think I, I can't, I can't get riled up about it. I, I, I can't because, yeah, he, he's a dick. I, I, I will admit that. It's not the worst, but he's, he's certainly not, not a very good chap. So, um, yeah, four and a half. Well, good, that's well fine. written. Mm-hmm. Super well written. Oh, I would yes. like to read more from her. Yeah. You know what we didn't. <clears throat> when uh when victor came we didn't really talk about like first off how rude james was to victor who was doing him a favor and coming in on the day off but like in terms of the silver fish is a metaphor right the silver fish were a sign that something worse was wrong in the house Mm-hmm. And James specifically refused to acknowledge or treat any oh, of that. Like, right. Oh, there's a lot of moisture up there. Well, and he closes the laundry room door where the ceiling paint is peeling because, right, something's wrong. It's a great metaphor. You're right. Yeah. yeah. We forgot to bring that up because we we're too busy trying to convince Gerald that James is the worst. But yeah, he doesn't yeah. want to look at the peeling paint. Yep. Mm-hmm. And won't let him fix it or look into it. He's like, no, just spray poison. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. James yeah. is the worst. Just James fix, worst. fix, fix the immediate problem. That right, long term. Yeah, so I'm, I'm up to a five. I'm going to a five. <laughs> okay, that is that is very good. I'm, not, I, I'm going no further though. That's fair I enough. Wave, I wave my peg at you. I don't know why I've got a peg. <laughs> You've been playing with that peg. I have been playing with my peg. With the peg. All right, my peg. five's good. It may not be a very nice peg. It may maybe the ugliest peg in the world, but it's my peg. <laughs> Sorry, this is not Porter a feels pug about Chihuahua peg. peg hybrid. Yeah, it is. It is. Can you imagine <laughs> just like the audacity of bringing in a pet that no one asked for, and then expecting those people to care for that pet? Oh, Jesus, the worst. <laughs> Hey, what are we reading next week? Uh, next week we're reading about how James is the worst. <laughs> Just this one again. Uh, <laughs> oh, here we have a comment from uh, 
from Emily, one of our listeners, viewers, I guess, since this is live. Um, Emily says, when I read it, I took it as a cautionary tale of what Lauren was capable of. <laughs> I mean, James does get cowed a little bit by the end, right? He's like, right. oh, what would you do in a divorce? And I'm like, I hope everything. Right. <laughs> I, I hope his head ends up in the neighbor's <laughs> trash can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Next time, it'll be your head. And then she'd lie about that as well, wouldn't she? Well, yeah. To get away with that. it. Yeah. <laughs> but that's she, all right so lying okay. is fine a jury of her peers other put upon former career <laughs> women now stay at home moms would not right. convict her <laughs> okay all right so <sighs> next week we are reading the library of Babel by Jorge Luis Borges but before you go let me get to my script yep but before you go tell us whether or not you think Lauren is responsible for Daisy's death in our Facebook group, The Literary Roadhouse Readers. And while we know many men are not like James, unfortunately, many other men are. We believe our podcast helps rehabilitate men like James by showing them how terrible they are through fiction. Help men like James find us by leaving an iTunes review and supporting our podcast expenses by making a contribution at patreon.com slash literary roadhouse. Every bit helps. And as always, share this podcast with the vicious pug mix in your life. Until next time, read a good story. What a terrible dog. Awful dog. It's only because nobody loves him. No one can love him. Her. 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 Her.